So now we're going to start looking at some different examples of groups. And the first example we're going to look at is the integers mod n. We're going to actually look at four different sorts of versions of the integers mod n. And the first one, pretty familiar, is our bumpy square. So remember this is the one where we can rotate it, but we can't actually flip it. And if we have our square, there's four different rotations, and we know that that's the group of symmetries of that particular object. So it's a group. Easy, easy. For our second sort of realization of this group, we're going to first write a new operation, maybe one that you haven't seen before. We have that percentage sign there, and we're going to read that as a mod n. So whenever you see a percentage sign, we're going to read it as mod. And then we're going to say a mod n is the remainder of a when you divide by n. So 7 mod 5 is 2, 3 mod 4 is 3, 5 mod 4 is 1, 12 mod 2 is 0. As a set, zn, as we're going to write it, will be the number 0 through n minus 1, which is the set of remainders that you can possibly get when you divide by n. But now we need an operation. And that operation is going to be like this. We're going to take any two numbers from zn, so those numbers between 0 and n minus 1, and to add them, we're just going to add them together and then divide, you know, take the modulus by n. So, for example, if we take 1 plus 1, we get 2. If we take 2 plus 2, mod 4, we get 0. And 3 plus 2, mod 4 is 1. And if we want to, we can even make an addition table. So the numbers 0 through 3 are all we have. So we can look at 0 plus 0 is 0, 2 plus 2 is 0, 3 plus 1 is 0, and 1 plus 3 is 0. And, you know, 2 plus 0 is 0, and so on and so forth. Then we see 3 plus 2 is 1. Yeah? And we can even fill in the whole table. Very nice. In fact, you can do that for any kind of group, so long as you don't have infinitely many elements. Now, let's see. How about a third version? So the third version is something that you've done kind of all your life. So if you take a clock with n hours on it, you know, usually our clocks have 12 hours, and we're going to get rid of the number 12 and replace it with a 0 to make it look a little bit more like Z12, the number 0 through 11. And then Z12, we know that 0 plus 10 is, or sorry, 10 plus 5 is 15, which mod 12 is 3. Likewise, on a regular clock, if, you, if it's 10 o'clock and you wait 5 hours, it's going to be 3. Likewise, if you're on like Mars or someplace else that like rotates really fast, maybe your clock only has 4 hours on it. You can do something like 3 plus 3. You wait 3 hours from 3 o'clock and suddenly it's 2. Our fourth one is going to be a little bit more complicated. You might even say it's complex because it uses complex numbers. And this will be the nth roots of unity. So remember when you have x squared equals 1, the next can be either plus or minus 1. That's cool. What about x cubed equals 1? Usually it's just x equals 1 is the answer, but if you're working with the complex numbers, it turns out there's a few different answers. So first, let's remember the complex numbers. You can always write them as a length times e to the i theta r e to the i theta. This is called the polar form of the complex number. So if you take r e to the i theta cubed equal to 1, and that simplifies, you know, you can distribute the cube and you get r cubed times e to the i 3 theta. That r cubed better be 1 because we know that the size of 1 is 1. And that i 3 theta is going to need to be equal to 0. So we need to solve 3 theta equals 2 pi. So theta is equal to 2 pi over 3. Or, you know, 2 pi is the same as 0, so you can also take theta equal to 0. And 2 pi is the same as 4 pi, so you can also take theta equal to 4 pi over 3. So in fact, we get three different solutions to x cubed equals 1. Now if we think of n equals 4, you can sort of play through the same game. So we've got x to the fourth equals 1, so x could be 1, which is the same as e to the 0. Or it could be e to the i pi over 2, or e to the 3 pi over 2, or it could be negative 1. For n equals 4, we get four solutions. What's the operation on our set? Ah, it's multiplication, in fact. So if we you know, write out these different numbers that we've written in our polar form, we've got negative 1 is e to the i pi, 0 is e to the 0. And now we can multiply two of these together. e to the i 3 pi over 2 times e to the i pi, it turns out is the same as e to the 5 pi i over 2, which is the same as 
you know, e to the i pi over 2, which was one of our fourth roots of unity. Now, we said that this is the polar form of the complex numbers, so we should be able to draw it pretty nicely. And in fact, that r equals 1 means that we're going to be somewhere on the unit circle. So we can draw theta equals 0, theta equals pi over 2, theta equals pi, and finally, our theta equals 3 pi over 2. And that gives us our, a nice picture of our four things. And when you multiply two of them together, you really see that you just add the angles. And it's really that picture is behaving sort of like the clock, except it's running kind of counterclockwise instead of clockwise. So now we've seen four different sorts of versions of something that seems really similar in all of these cases. We've got our symmetries of the uh, bumpy square. We've got our Z4 with addition. We've got our clock with n hours. And we've also got our complex numbers. So in each of these different cases, the operation was something different. But we're getting something that's somehow the same. With our symmetries, we were looking at composition of functions. With our Zn, we were looking at this sort of funky form of addition. With our clock, we were looking at like uh, rotation or something, moving the, uh, spinning the arms around, you know? And finally, with our nth roots of unity, we're looking at multiplication. So an exercise, you know, kind of an expository exercise is, you know, write a little bit about what the similarities or differences are between these different things. And also make like addition, composition, multiplication tables for all of these four different cases with n equals 5 and n equals 6.